like um, like Darren uh, to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and please give us more information about uh, Rigo Africa Group. Hi, <laughs> thank you, Lauren. And I'm very happy to be on this panel. Um, as mentioned, my name is Anne Gaitha. I run a company called Rigo Africa where we basically help our clients create wealth. And really my, our focus at Regal Africa is to really help people in trade and investment. But it just so happens that I'm a FinTech enthusiast. I really believe in technology for good. So what we do at Regal Africa and what I've been championing my team to do is how do we use more technology to engage with other businesses, to engage with other clients. And I recognize the opportunity a lot around digital trade. I keep saying that's the great equalizer in Africa because before access to the global markets has been very challenging. But since inception, just like Darren was talking about, we've been using technology since 20, 2015 when we started Regal Africa. And really it has enabled us even with our small team to run a very effective and efficient business. And so those are the services we offer to our businesses and enable them to run businesses more professional so that they can be able to access more markets, receive payments, run operations, financial management, and that is all done through technology. So at Regal Africa, we are walking the talk. We believe in digital trade, and because we are an advisory firm, what we do offer is services. So trade is services is very important for us, and we say that location should not limit us in whatever we want to do. I can service a client here in Nairobi, as you can see my background, here in Nairobi from anywhere in the world. And that is exactly what we do. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you so much, Anne. And before I let you go, it's quite yes. interesting that you mentioned you have um, a lean team because yes. um, having seen the successes or having seen, um, I'm in Nairobi as well as you are, and I've, I've gotten to learn of your success uh, through our local news, and I actually thought you had a huge team supporting you. So as a leading financial services firm, who has said that you offer services even beyond Kenya? So how do you get these customers that you know, are not in Kenya? And, and what role has technology played in your service to these diverse needs of these customers? I think for us at Regal African, we're very deliberate from the very beginning is to build an excellent brand. So for us, we kept saying that we're offering world-class service, right? And our actually core value is what we call ticket to financial success, where we talk about teamwork, we talk about trust, integrity, client-centric knowledge. So those are the key things that we said we needed to do in order for us to build a brand. But beyond building just a brand, it's delivering, right? So even though, and, and like rightfully, as you say, people expect us to be a very huge team. In fact, when our team members come in, they think it's a very huge operation. It is huge in regards to vision, but what we have done is find the right people from everywhere around the world. So I'm in Nairobi. My marketing branding is done in the States. My web development is done in India. I have South African partners. Like I don't limit, Regal Africa does not limit itself from boundaries. It is where is the best talent, what is most cost effective. And that is why we actually champion for um, outsourcing of services that are not core. For me, as the vision behind Regal Africa, my core is to find clients and to offer them the right mm -hmm. advice. Everything else, HR, accounting, legal, marketing, all those extras that need to be done, including financial management, are all outsourced, right? So for me, what I say is that with that being outsourced, I'm able to deliver to my clients what they expect and even go beyond that. So I've been able to get clients through building my brand. So you will find it all over social media and our web presence. But I also get a lot of referrals because I deliver. And so for businesses, institutions, government, or individuals who've actually experienced our service, then refer. So with services, it's all about value, right? So how do you position yourself? How do you deliver? But like I said, most importantly, is building your brand and doing it well with world-class service. And that is how we're going to have more African businesses in this space of trading for services. Thank you so much. And, and 
That is a very, very key way to wrap that up. So thank you so much. And you mentioned Mauritius and Anne, I would like to get to you on this. So um, Mauritius is considered an international financial center and Rwanda and Kenya are trying to, you know, implement IFCs as well. What do you see are, are the opportunities and challenges? Thank you, Lorraine, for that question. Yes, when you talk about Mauritius, as Darren put, he has established his business in Mauritius. I think Mauritius has established itself as sort of the gateway into Africa, right? So it's positioned itself of offering a certain product and service so that everyone goes to Mauritius. I think for me personally, I'm very passionate about Nairobi and definitely Kenya and really making Nairobi as international financial center, but it's offering different services, not exactly what is offered in Mauritius. And I think also Rwanda is positioned itself in a certain way. When I look at, for example, Nairobi, I look at it as sort of the gateway into Africa, but more around the capital market flow of money into this, um, into this region of Africa. We're looking at it in regards to commercial banks, fund managers, things of that nature. So when I look at saying that um, um, Kenya or Nairobi International Financial Center can still be there. Mauritius is really known for offshore. It has a lot of double treaties. So it, 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 makes, it, it makes sense to set up a company there if you have a Pan-African or a global outlook. But then again, when you're looking, I think, to work in Africa on the continent, you want to look at it from, uh, from being on ground, for example, in Nairobi or in Kigali. And I think a lot of governments are trying to figure out how do you make yourself relevant? For example, London has an IFC, Dubai, Singapore, New York, but they are all very different and they are all focused on certain things. So for me, when I look at it, I feel that there is a different value proposition being in Nairobi, like I said, all around investment, all around financial services and banking and making it different from Mauritius. I do have to say that I've been continuing championing that Nairobi should actually have more people who are knowledgeable in investment, in legal, in tax advice, just everything that is needed in an international financial service, in an international financial center. And that will make more people come to Nairobi in order for them to be in this particular sector and it needs to grow. Unfortunately, I feel that it has not been something that has been put on the front line. It's actually part of what, what is called the Kenya Vision 2030 which was actually uh, envisioned in the last administration to make sure that Nairobi becomes an international financial center, but it hasn't really been done. So when we are saying that if it gets been pushed, then more people will know that they can be in this industry, it's profitable and they will take it up. I can tell you if you go into Mauritius, Malta, New York, London, everybody wants to be in those particular, they want to be in financial services because they know they'll get jobs. So if Nairobi or Kigali wants to be an IFC, they need to be very deliberate in educating people, making sure that their populace is able to offer the services. And if they do, then they can be able to offer these services to different people around the world who want to position themselves in Africa. And especially because of the AFCFTA, everyone is either setting up shops in Africa to take advantage of it, or they're already here. And so I believe it's a great uh, opportunity for, um, for, for different IFCs. Like I said, Mauritian has its proposition. Kenya has to come up with theirs and Rwanda has to come up with theirs and make it slightly different so that we all win. Thank you so much for that, Anne. I'm sorry, I can hear my echo again. I hope I'm audible. So yes, I wanted to, thank you. So I wanted to recognize that you're saying that uh, different African countries can also champion being IFC sent, IFCs rather, and it needs deliberate action from their governments, not only to educate their, their people on how to offer these financial services, but also um, come up with licenses or come up with terms that make it attractive for other countries to partner with them. That is a very interesting, um, notion and I call upon the government officials within our, our conference to take note of this and to help us champion that. 
Um, as we wind up, a uh, question for you, Anne, and you mentioned this about the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. And uh, this is something that's, you know, the buzz in, in Africa right now. But what is its impact in the services sector? Is it something that benefits people who do services? Or is it just for the, you know, goods trading people, businesses? All right. That's a good question. Um, because Hello? Okay. Hi. Was, uh, yeah, that's a really good question because I have been talking to everybody about the AFCFTA, but remember it's a phased out um, agreement. So a lot of it has been started, but the work will take some time. And definitely whenever people talk about trade, they focus on goods. So that was the sort of the first thing that a lot of people were looking at. How do we export? How do we trade? How do we move goods and people around? But the next protocol that is going to be discussed around trade in services, intellectual property, a lot of things that deal with services. So that is coming. But because we know it's coming, and especially as in the private sector, I always say that you need to be proactive so that you can also advocate for the right policies to be put in regards to services. So mm -hmm. for me, in trade in services, I see great, great opportunity, both brought about by the AFCFTA and also globally. I'll give an example. I've been mentioning about Regal Africa because we have been focused on offering advisory services. And because we support businesses, one of the things that we were doing is actually raising capital. Now, when you're raising capital, one of the things investors look for is your financial records. Unfortunately, in Africa, most businesses don't keep their financial records. So how do you go and how do you go ahead and actually offer um, this? Um, how do you actually support them? You can't support them. So what we did based on actually um, something I thought about when I was doing my MBA in San Francisco, when I was in San Francisco, I recognized there were so many people coming to Silicon Valley from India because they were actually always in the IT space. It's something that was really focused in the IT space. And I, re I remember thinking, what is it that in Kenya we offer service-wise? And one of the things I recognized was accounting. My father was an accountant, my grandfather was an accountant. Everybody did accounting. It's sort of, you finish high school, you go in and start doing your CPA. It's something that we do. So in coming back, it was something at the back of my mind, but I didn't actualize it. But when I started Regal Africa and I recognized the challenge that people were having raising capital, we decided to offer a solution under what we call our global office uh, department. Under global office, we offer accounting outsourcing. So from anyone around the world, I'm in Nairobi, someone is in the States, someone is in South Africa, someone is in Nigeria, we offer accounting outsourcing for them. And the way we do it is we actually link them up with online accounting software, and then everything is done digitally. So all the inputs, revenue, all the expenses, and they're able to get their books, okay? And the reason I'm bringing this up is because the opportunity of the FCFTA is to say, if we don't have enough bookkeepers and accountants and auditors in Niger, but they are in Kenya, that is the service we'll offer, right? We have all these sort of offshore places that need fund accounting, the Maltas, the Mauritius, the, the, the Jerseys, right? And it might be very expensive for them to actually have sort of a fund accountant there, but they can come to Nairobi and we offer that service, right? So those are the things that we're doing at, um, at Regal Africa and saying, when it comes to accounting, bookkeeping, audit, anything to do with financial records, is something that we're championing that can happen from Kenya. And so we are going to continuously see more services happening, all right? Uh, the limitation would be around regulation. You asked that, you know, about that, uh, because for example, there are some places where you, of course, if you're actually offering accounting and audit service, you need to be actually licensed in that jurisdiction. But when it just comes to bookkeeping, you don't need that, right? You don't need to be licensed. But so again, those are some of the things that we offer with virtual CFO services. So I believe that with the value proposition that we're having, we will start to see that happening. So Kenya might be accounting. South Africa is probably customer service. Maybe go to Nigeria, they're good in marketing, digital marketing. So we'll start seeing the different African countries are sort of positioning themselves into something. Also, for example, in Kenya, it's a lot of IT. So Darren mentioned about Adela. We have great, great talent on this continent. We're educated. 
And the truth about it, whether it's a business in Africa, whether it's a business around the world, we look at costs. So if I get an accountant and I'm gonna pay them $5,000 or let's do bookkeeping, I'll pay them $2,000. And next you can get that same service through Regal Africa at $500. I will take the $500, right? So that is what we're saying. There's going to be a growth of trade in services, both in traffic for trade and globally, as long as we have an educated um, uh, populace that is able to actually uh, take up the services. And the last thing I'd have to say that because before you actually roll out something, you have to pilot it. My team of accountants are mostly young people and women. Young people, because again, um, you know, they are starting out, they need to learn, maybe it's very hard for them to actually get a position at a company. So what we do is you can get an accountant who has five, 10 companies and you pay them a small amount of money, but it grows. So for example, each company, they would probably get $100, but if they are assigned to 10 companies, now that's $1,000, right? So that's what we're looking at. The other thing we've seen is women. A lot of women are educated. So somebody was a CPA somewhere, but because they got married, had children, they don't want to stay in that corporate environment, but they still have that skill set. So you offer them, you give them a position to be a virtual CFO or a part-time accountant, and that way it's flexible for them. So we're going to start seeing more women and young people actually trading in services professional services, customer care, you'll have to be able to see, um, you will be able to see this growing, growing, growing. And that's that's the kind of work that we're doing at Regal Africa to champion the trading service fleet. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that, um, sorry, I can hear the echo again. Thank you. So I'm very happy that you've given us sort of your final remarks. Um, and I, I know you are a champion of trade and investments in Africa with Africa. So thank you for demonstrating that even if you are a, a CFO or you, you're someone who's just offering services within Kenya, if you position yourself correctly, you can offer these services virtually to other organizations, to other individuals in different countries. So thank you for that. Thank you.